Welcome back, everybody. You are getting a live look at the Wisdom Watch Party at Mall of America. People all over NA having a great time here with our finals. But I'll tell you what, my friends, nobody is having a better time than the evil geniuses right now. Up 2-0, making it look easy in game number one, and then making it look that like they turned down the difficulty in game number two. <laughs> Isaiah was just talking to me about EG also have the quickest times out of their chairs. Yeah. Because they instantly win the game, and they're like, oh, what do we do? Well, just smash them again. You All know? right, boys, we slapped them. <laughs> I guess we'll do that again. It's, a it's actually crazy. Two three zeros leading up to this point has to be weighing on everyone's mind. Yeah, so of every course. everybody is jumping to, at this point, the conclusion of, wow, they're going to do it again. They're going to 3-0. But you cannot fall into that trap as a 100 Thieves fan or a 100 Thieves player. They have done this before, and they will need to do another reverse sweep to keep their championship hopes alive. And 100 Thieves will be on blue side this time. So I'm, I'm really interested to see, you know, will they do like something like what we saw from EG last time? Yeah. First pick J4, right? Just get something proactive for closer. Lee Sin is never going to go off the ban list, let's be honest. They're yeah. not going to allow him to yeah. play it. Um, but we do need to see him, you know, being that, that absolute confidence boost for the team, playing aggressive, taking over the game. We know he can do that. And 100 Thieves need that more than ever right now because you need oh, a yeah. great start to this third game or the mental can really get affected. I actually wanted to pick the Graves again just so I could talk about how great Umbral no. Glaive with no. Zombie Ward is. It's not even the right pack. <laughs> and yet he built it anyway. So yeah, it's 100 gold cheaper on live. Let's get right into champion select here I'm for game number J4 three. First. I, okay. think, I think they're going to get proactive. Two games in a row, you went Trundle, you went Graves. You didn't go heavy early ganking junglers. It didn't work out. Are they going to double ban Danny again, though? Because the, the Zeri plus the Jinx yeah. still was not a hindrance. Yeah, and, and that would be problematic. You know, you, you can't ban out everything. They're going to ban out LeBlanc, so they're obviously not willing to first pick that. Don't want to give it right. over to, to EG on their first crack. Um, but I am really expecting, you know, it's, it's just atypical for 100 Thieves to have close around the more passive junglers. All yeah. their success has been with him playing aggressive. He's a huge part of what gets them those wins. So we've got a jungler and a mid laner banned from both oh, sides like here this. with Nocturne, Lee Sin, LeBlanc, Ari banned away, Tom Kench, and Lucian out of the picture. Yeah. 100 Thieves, will it be that Jarvan or will we get something else? Zeri has been banned in both games so far and locked in for 100 Thieves. And the Kench ban, I think, is supposed to be basically denying the jinx, right? You ban yeah. out the Kench, you draft dive, and you say, all right, you're not going to pick this without Tom Kench or we're going to kill you. Yep. Meanwhile, instant answer here from Evil Geniuses. They're, of mm -hmm. course, expecting this. When you leave Zeri up, Zeri's going to get first pick. So they instantly answer with the best uh, you know, answer for Zeri, which is point and click CC, Nautilus. Yep. If you're giving up Zeri, you always need to make sure that you're getting something like the Nautilus there in exchange. And so they lock that one in okay. early. Whoa, ho, ho. <laughs> there we go. Trademark closer pick, Viego locked in, and Leona bottom lane with that Zeri. When they need him the most. They call on his finals MVP champion here, mm -hmm. Viego. Can Closer do it again? And now uh, you're already so excited to see if there's going to be those early game skirmishes because if Viego can get that first kill in those fights in the river like we saw last time around in summer finals, he gets the reset. He can start to take over. I mean, if you get Nautilus, if you get J4, like those are powerful bodies to pick up because the CC that you're then granted is incredible. It's always really nice picking up something that does have its own dash as yep. well, because that lets you chain for the real pentakill opportunities. So both of those are very good option. Of course, we're going to get some mid lane bans here as yes, it sir. has not been locked up, but the Forge God as well. 100 Thieves not not allowing for EG to blind pick this one because it has only been EG that have been able to deal with it. Right, and remember that this is also going to be the first time with EG on red, meaning that they will have that first pick out of the second half of the band. So 100 Thieves not willing to give that one over. Both of EG's bands are focused on the mid lane, the TF band out, the Azir band out. One more to go for 100 Thieves. Do they want to continue right. to try to chip away at that top side pool, or do you take away the thing JoJo's already played twice? I mean, if they don't ban Rise, he's going to pick it on four. You have to to yeah. feel like right so it's it's really you know if you're not going to ban it out you have to have another mid laner that you're really confident playing into it instead they ban the akali it feels like maybe what they're expecting out of like i guess impact does play it jojo does play it so there is a possibility maybe they're worried about a flex, flex. Yeah. they don't want to see something on four they want to be able to have the answers to both the soul lanes here potentially as victor you know going to be the one choice and victor pretty safe yeah 
And Danny, uh, or, uh, JoJo definitely plays it as aggressively as possible mm -hmm. up in lane with all early game runes. Let's see what the answer from Abba is. Vex would be interesting because I mean, when you ban out TK, you obviously want to dive. You know, Vex can get towards that backline, but Sai is a tough champion to dive. And it, yeah. it does make your whole team comp revolve around resets then. Is it, yeah. Vex is a very bursty champion. They go it. Okay. If, if you're going to commit on closer on the resets for Viego, I actually really like this, even though you're not playing it into a lane that has dashes. You know, it's not a super great lane counter pick there, but for your team, they, they, they feel like the only way for them to win is get those resets in the team fights. Vex is amazing for one shot combos and long range engages. All right, well, with Aatrox locked in for someday, what will be Impact's response here in the top lane? Hovering over this Gnar for a while. Curious if they'll decide to lock it in or not. The timer's getting awfully yes, low, sir. and there it is. Aatrox versus Gnar, top side. Very different look here, 400 Thieves. It's going to be an interesting game. You know, as you said, Kobe, all about the resets, all about getting that first kill. Leona to lock down the target. You know, Vex, Zeri, uh, Viego all piling in to try to burst this guy out. If you can get that first kill, reset on Viego, he can potentially set up that next Vex ulti, that next combo to come in. And we'll see if they can pile through. Victor, you're going to have to position very well because he is the most susceptible. He is the carry that you're going to be targeting. Absolutely. Zaya can much more easily reactively, you know, R the Vex R and just immune that. In lane, though, Victor, pretty comfortable versus Vex. And yep. so I expect JoJo to try and abuse that to oh, the yeah. fullest and call Inspired. Since you have Jarvan on your team, utilize your strength. The mid jungle here from EG can be very aggressive. Oh, man, this game number three is going to be so much fun. 100 Thieves. This is it, man. You either win this Do one or, or it's all done. They've got the closer Viego that has made so many highlight reels so many times. But if you're talking about a highlight reel, I feel like Danny's just a walking one. So it's, oh, I, I can't wait. I mean, Danny has been in a couple splits. He has incredible plays. We'll see if 100 Thieves can start to bring this one back. They're going to have to do it now. Alrighty, everybody, here it goes. Game number three. 2 0 right now for Evil Geniuses. 100 Thieves has got to find the magic here in this one. Level one invade into the enemy red side jungle. Again, versus a Jarvan, really critical here. Getting a ward near Raptors or Red so you can know the start for this champion, know that it won't get that early surprise play off. All right, nothing more going to come from it, though. You can see the counter warding coming out from EG mm -hmm. at the red buff of their own opponents, going ahead and making sure that they're getting similar information to what 100 Thieves got for themselves. But like you guys were talking about in game number one, it's Jarvan who has all those gank options early on. It's Jarvan that's famous for the red into level two gank immediately as one of those options. Viego not quite as successful at those sorts of things, but hey, if they're gonna get the information, you might as well too. Absolutely, and what Viego can really excel at is if you can get those counter ganks, right? Or if you can find those skirmishes around some of these early objectives, things like scuttles where you can fight for it. Uh, Jojo, as you said, Kobe, trying to get aggressive here early on, chugging those potions, the Q trades with the auto, a very, very powerful. You get the shield, you look to go aggressive. And it's more about that 5v5 where he's going to have to be worried about the engage, but these early levels is really where this guy shines. Exactly, and now we see Inspire going from red to the Raptors, so they are fully aware of Inspire's current position. Jojo warding on the top side as well because they have been able to infer that that is also the side that Closer started on due to the ward that you pointed out on red. Yep. And down here in bottom lane, these guys just never stop scrapping. It's Vulcan and Danny walking up trying to grab some damage onto Huhi, but Danny does take a couple of hits back. 100 Thieves aren't done, and oh. Danny's going to be forced to flash. However, 100 Thieves now turning their attention over onto Vulcan. He's Danny's still firing. Vulcan wants to get away, but the 100 Thieves have first.
first blood on FBI. Is there going to be a follow-up response here? Because that was flash prone from Hoogie, but FBI still has his. So the Zeri very safe there. Hoogie can peel for him, and there's no response allowed from EG. Yet again, a 2v2 kill on the bottom side for 100 Thieves. Yeah, that's big. And this time, though, it's FBI who comes away with the first blood. He gets the gold that is so big for them. As soon as Danny missed that Q, you know, the cooldown comes back up. He misses the Q. No hesitation from who he's flashing in, forcing the flash back from Danny reactively. They wanted to go for that scrap, and now closer heading mid. Well, top side is Mininar bopping a melee champion, as he is usually likely to do. Who he roaming up at level two, looking towards this mid lane now as well. If Jojo keeps playing aggro, he could get punished. But you can see the adjustment in his play. Jojo knows, all right, the jungler started top side and bottom side has freedom to roam. So this is good team communication and just your own map awareness from Jojo. He backs off. He also hover to the top side of the map where your ward is, where you know the enemy jungle started. So he avoids Further disaster for evil geniuses. However, uh, 100 Thieves really want to pry this lead open and build on it. I mean, one of the big things is that Zeri, unlike most AD carries, is an AD carry that can spike on one That's item alone. Word. Yep. Trinity Force is still uh, the popular build. Abadaga getting away here as Jojo throws down that gravity field to just get him back a little bit. You can see the bar fully charged, so that fear is ready to go here for the side of 100 Thieves mid laner. Overall, despite the first blood being worth about 600 gold, it's only a plus 200, 300 or so advantage for the side of 100 Thieves. And a lot of that is coming out from these early farm leads. I mean, you can see the Victor's plenty far ahead, the Gnar is plenty far ahead. Yeah, and kind of what we were talking about where you're picking the Vex for your reset for your team, uh, for the long range engage, but you are going to sacrifice some amount of gold here early on in the lane phase. And JoJo always the type of mid laner to try and take advantage of that. All right, everything just going to take a little bit of a breather here as our mid laners will go ahead and use this opportunity to get back to base, shop up a little bit here. You can see the Amp Tome coming in for the side of Evil Geniuses, the Doran's Ring, the Corrupting Potion, a little bit of laning power, a little bit of scaling there. Over on the other side, the Dark Seal plus the Boots for Abadaga, the extra movement speed there, giving him the ability to try to dodge some of these lasers and get out of the way a little bit more. And not only are EG you know, hunting for their first title, they're, they're hunting a bit of LCS history here because if they are able to win this, this game, win the series before 29-18, I believe the time is, it would be the fastest finals in LCS history. With the current one currently being held by Team Liquid over 100 Thieves. Mm -hmm. And that's where that mark was set back in spring 2018 when Team Liquid 3 0 them. So 100 Thieves, they got to make sure that don't happen. It's closer. Finding Inspired here as he tried to go around, but he won't be able to push any further forward. It is such an interesting topic of the LCS, of the really strong surge of these teams that came in in franchising and the success where just last year we had 100 Thieves putting up a banner themselves as a franchise, mm -hmm. a new franchise team. And now Evil Geniuses are following in their footsteps to some degree here and maybe even over their own body. Yeah, and I mean, EG, you know, even just this late season surge, it's been incredible. You know, you look back to the start of playoffs, no one was really predicting that this team would be able to make it this far. People were still looking at a lot of those higher seeds, not really thinking that EG would be able to make such a big impact. They hadn't had a lot of success against the top seeds during the regular season, but yeah. they have just reached a new level, have really been able to kick it to high gear, find a play style that works for them, and it just feels like every single time some play goes good for them, they're just building in confidence and building in that aggression. Now look at these slow trades from Jojo. He goes for damage positive trades over and over and over again. And Abba is forced to use all his mana, those slower moving cues on the wave. And Jojo gets a big health advantage, but the early start on the dragon here by closer. 100 Thieves have the backup for this. You can see Inspired wandering down here. He sees what's going on. Abadaga does have the fear ready to go there, goes for the ulti. Gets the fear, but Inspired does get himself away, so he won't die, but that is still first Drake confirmed at six and a half minutes for the side of 100 Thieves. And you can give the lion's share of the credit for that objective to the bottom lane of 100 Thieves, mm -hmm. to, to FBI and Hoogie pushing up, aggressively playing once again, threatening on this EG duo, and being able to roam over to the Drake first. And they have been better in the 2v2. They just have not been able to really translate those advantages to the rest of the game, and that's what they're gonna have to try to improve on here. It'll be interesting to see, you know, how many of their resources they're trying to put into FBI, are they going to do you know the EGS strat where you're just dumping all of your gold into your carry, putting that faith in FBI as EG does in Danny?
Well, closer getting closer and closer to level six here. You can see about three quarters of the EXP bar. That's when the Viego can pop off, but it's 2v2 here in the bottom lane. FBI dropping the ulti as who he's ready to try to follow up. However, he flashes <laughs> after the Zenith Blade is already cast. So there is no follow-up. I love it from Vulcan. He says, I saw that. Nice thumbs up there. The reason for that quick disengage is, you know, FBI hits level six as soon oh. as EG went in, and they're not done. He's got no heal. FBI going in, trying to flash forward. Danny wants to turn it around, but the kill goes over to FBI. 100 Thieves, however, just get stomped. Double kill for Vulcan. Nautilus knocking him down. King of the Depths puts him in the grave, but not before FBI gets another kill and critically none of that gold is going to Danny so yeah. FBI getting further and further ahead here yeah with the team that is most focused on funneling gold in EG and funneling gold into Danny all the gold they're going on to King Vulcan see what he can do with this Nautilus on his roam timer he's right back out onto base and support roam timers are the next big thing to look at even on vision here EG able to start up this rift Herald. they know they've got their duo uh, right in preparation, plus the constant pressure uh, towards mid. And you can see FTX total gold. I mean, Vulcan is actually ahead of Someday right now in gold. Get yeah. the early to your boots. You know, he's out on the map trying to get aggressive. And you love to see that, the support rotations, the abilities of these guys, especially on champions like the Nautilus, like the Leona. Your ability to facilitate and make these plays is huge. Let's take another look at this dive here underneath the turret. All right, so they poke Danny extremely low, and they know that he's level five, but as soon as they go for the dive, he dings the level six. So it's the exact reverse scenario of what started this whole thing out. That minion dying on tower gives him experience range. He's kind of far away, but just in range for the level six. Danny gets his level six. He delays, he allows for that turnaround kill. The reason you so go so aggro there, 400 Thieves, is they were trying to prey on his level five disadvantage. But again, that experience timer that just worked out in their favor then turns around. They're trying to zone them back further away, and that's why it looked like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if he didn't get six and have that big blade caller, there's no shot that Nautilus gets those kills. So a big deal for them there. Topside, though, it's been rough for some days. Impact has been dictating this lane. He's up 20 CS. They have about even minions to farm. You know, now a couple more there to grab for some day if he can complete it. Um, but things being tough up in the top side. Well, we've got a rotation coming up as Abadaga is ready to go in and help Someday out a little bit. Someday's landing all sorts of spells on the impact as the poor little Yordle tries to get away. But Abadaga's ready to follow. Nice little yoink there from Abadaga. <laughs> they get the assist money as well. It's better for the team. But you also need, again, this Vex champion is so about the burst combo. So you yep. do need money on the Vex. But we need to see the fight down here first. It's who he on the front line. Tons of damage onto JoJo. He wants to get away. He won't quite be able to do it. However, he will take closer out. FBI grabbing the kill back onto JoJo, who he's trying to escape. Danny firing back here with the feathers, but he's not going to grab the damage just yet. Five to three game in favor of 100 Thieves. This is so big for them, man. They're building in confidence. They're winning these fights. They're coming alive here. 100 Thieves. Slow to awaken, but hard to stop. Let's see if they can actually make good on keeping this series alive. They also were able to then push in on top side, oh, get the reset. Back. Oh, FBI! He's made a crucial mistake, and the punish comes in. Really smart from Inspired. They're just sticking around with Danny. FBI had the read that they had reset off of that play, but they wait for it. They get the kill. Really nicely done. All right, let's take a look at that invade and who he going to lead the charge 400 thieves backs up, puts his W on and then goes right in for the counter to proc his aftershock and they just burst down Jojo so quickly on the victor. Critical things to keep in mind with the victor flash being blown in this invade in this replay is the repeat of these types of hundred thieves plays then chasing out uh, evil geniuses from their jungle. The one thing they then don't keep track of as you mentioned is the little turn there from mm -hmm. Inspired. He walks away up the river, but then out of vision is able to wrap around for the lane gang. And that's a shutdown, so it is nice. Unfortunately, it did go on to Inspired, not on Danny, but Danny, you know, of course, going for the crit build here. He has Gale Force. He is playing lethal tempo, so it is higher auto attack DPS, you know, less bursty potentially than that uh, lethality build. Uh, but he is going to be the guy tasked with burning through that front line.
Absolutely. Down here in bottom lane, the wave crashes into the turret. The second Drake of the game is live. It was 100 Thieves claiming that first one, that Infernal. And now this second, the Hextech Drake has spawned up. Evil geniuses are the ones who are going to take that. We got ourselves a one-to-one -one Drake score, so nobody working towards that soul threat here just yet. And EG continue to keep the wave shoved up. Rift Arrow going to be summoned here. Only 90 seconds left before turret plates fall. Value's going to be grabbed out of that one. There we go. Rear your head back, Shelly. And kablam! There's two plates already, and EG seeing if they can get some more. And this is a really interesting game for a potential Cloud Soul. Is they're actually going to TP bot with Vex. It's maybe it was anticipating a bit of dive or just kind of swapping it around. But, you know, if they do get Cloud Soul on 100 Thieves' side, I think it's incredibly powerful for a lot of these champions. Vex, Viego, Aatrox, Zeri all get so much out of that active boost. Plus the 10% flat move speed is amping all of your other move speed bonuses that you're getting. Zeri can get absolutely out of control with it. Yeah, when they're looking for Pentakill resets, definitely going to aid them in chasing people down, getting into position. And the positioning is, again, going to be critical for this team. We mentioned JoJo's flash in the, in the last replay. Mm -hmm. He is still the target. As of right now, he is 100 Thieves enemy number one, a flashless victor. That should be on the minds of every 100 Thieves player, no matter where you are. Currently, who he making the roam up towards top side of the map to see if they can get anything off of impact. But he is about to transform into mini. Still has, for the flash. Round. still has flash, though. Mini Nar gets hit by the first Q. Who he coming up? Closer throwing out the mist. Solar Flare gets flashed away from an impact. Stay safe. That's why you usually look for the, the carries that do not have flash and are more vulnerable in these stages. Vex does have ultimate available here for Abe, so they could still pull it off, and he will retain his flash advantage. It feels like 100 Thieves, you know, really are putting an emphasis on trying to keep Sunday in this because he has been getting pressured. You know, early executioners grabbed up by Impact. He's trying to pressure this lane, had been pretty far ahead, and they're trying to put pressure on Impact to unlock Sunday because they know he needs to be a contributing factor in this game. Yeah. Well, just rinse and repeat, Danny, solo goal for him. If the tower is going to go down, everyone on EG is evacuating. Give it all to Danny. Yup, sound the siren. Everybody out. It's <laughs> only Danny allowed to be there. He's the one in control. The gold lead is still about 2,500 for the side of EG, despite how back and forth this game has been. A lot of that, of course, being these farm values for the two solo laners. Plus 30 here in the mid lane for JoJo on this victor. We already talked about how aggressively he likes to play these matches how smart he is about the trading with those quick patterns mm -hmm. back and forth, always going health positive. Now, we'll see if we get a fight yeah. in the top side. Honestly, we might, because there are pretty big power spikes here on EG off of that reset. Because everybody evacuated, Danny got all of the gold, allowed him to fund that Phantom Dancer. So two item completion here for Danny. Now on the Zaya, everybody reset from Evil Geniuses. And so they'll start it out first, but what, e what 100 Thieves have to say about it? Okay, Closer's hanging out. He sees this is 5,000 HP. We're gonna get at least one more eyeball out of the Herald, but who he might just die here for the very start. He uses stasis, he'll buy a little bit of time. Vulcan's gonna be taken low, but who he's already down. Inspired tries to get away, but JoJo has found FBI. Hunter Thieves tries to get impact, and Someday's gonna take him. But what else can they find? It doesn't look like a lot as Closer and Someday are in the back part of the Herald pit. Inspired and Vulcan. Very low on HP, and he's gonna be stolen by Inspired and the evil geniuses as 100 Thieves fall back into the enemy jungle. How do EG keep winning all of these neutral objective fights? Oh, oh he's closer there! Two. He's ready to go, but he cannot do it. The dream is al it was alive there for a second, though. They're not done yet. Someday's still looking. Danny stepping up. Abadaga looks foolish in front of JoJo. And EG gets both. EG getting a lot here, but you can tell 100 Thieves are not going to leave anything on the table. They will keep on attacking. They're throwing everything, trying to clutch on to their last remnants of hope. Man, that turn from EG on to Closer. If he doesn't instantly die there, he gets out of that body, out of that Nautilus. He has another reset. That could have been a triple kill. That yeah. could have been a wipe, and that would have been the swing that 100 Thieves needed. It's those kind of plays.
plays where he so frequently goes big. But EG had the quick turn to burst them down, not allow him to use those resets. And in the end, evil geniuses get so much more out of it. They were also able to pick up the Rift Herald in addition to the extra kills here and the gold lead increasing for them. Look at the way that they start this out. JoJo just unloads on Huhi, so they're, they're fighting front to back. And, and Huhi here, first one into the river. Meanwhile, you see Abba on and FBI. FBI on the backside. FBI moving forward here. Vulcan flashes to the side, finds the angle for the hook. Everyone piles in on him and bursts FBI out. He just gets erased. It's because they melt that front line so quickly and then walking up into the face of the victor. We've seen many an AD carry make that mistake. 100 Thieves then, someday didn't want to let go of this one. He went back in for the kill, gets it. They can't quite get that Herald. Inspired slips in, he's got the smite. They chase him out of the pit as well, but this is where you take another breath. The attempt at the reset. Oh. EG coming in now with that Herald push down mid lane. They'll take the tier two with it. Now they're going to keep on going. Inhibitor turret in their sights. Not quite getting that one all the way. Abadaga trying to just take the tier one in top lane. Trading a tier one for a tier three feels bad. That was three towers. They just took all three mid lane towers there on the same push. They're getting tier two bot as well. EG again running away with it. 100 thieves. And they're going to be able to get Dragon after that as well. EG can just retreat to the Dragon. They reset everybody else, and they've got tons of money to spend. We're only 18 and a half minutes into this game. Where were you when EG became the fiercest team in the LCS by miles? And don't forget, this wasn't a fluke. This wasn't no luck of the draw. They lost 3-2 to TL to go into the lower bracket. Then they beat C9. They beat TL, and now, with a 5,500 gold lead and a 2-0 game advantage, they're on the cusp of beating the reigning champ. What's funny is how similar the story as we have another fight here on Vulcan. Well, Vulcan, I don't think this is a fight, Kobe. I think that's more of a beatdown. Ooh, definitely not a fair fight, that's for sure. How similar this story is, though, to G2, actually, and we know that they're in the same group. That is going to be a crazy meetup of these lower bracket juggernauts that EG have turned into. And EG, if they complete this one, which they look like they are well on pace to do, it would be three quick three zeros of the best teams in the LCS. There will be zero doubt that EG are the best team in the LCS. Those were the top three seeds that they had to actually march through. They played all of exactly. the strongest teams here. No question about it. 100 Thieves, though, for them, they need to start getting something going here. They need to continue to five picks to get these objective bounties. If you can win a big fight, clean up some of these objective bounties on these towers, you can swing the gold heavily back in your favor. And it's going to be all about the engage. If you can find the perfect engage, get an execution with the Vex, get an execution with that Diego, start to go to Reset City. That's what you're looking for. Visualize those Vex engages. You can definitely see them happening. Big burst, closer, reset. 100 Thieves, they've got to do something to keep the hope alive. 100 Thieves, that hope might be dwindling, though. Five and a half thousand gold lead for EG. They're controlling the entire map, choking their opponents out of their own jungle. Look at how dark this map is if you're looking at it from 100 Thieves' point of view. And the only light on that map, Flowers, are the objective bounties surrounding the objectives on That's EG's true. side. That is not a hopeful light. It's a little flashlight on the other side of a very, very dark path, my yeah. friend. Yeah, man, it's, it's just all about this next fight, it feels like. If you lose the next fight, you're going to lose Baron, and you're probably going to lose the game. But if you can win a fight here, 500 gold bounty on Danny, 450 gold bounty on Jojo Pion. You clean up a neutral objective off that. You take a Baron for yourselves. All of a sudden, that swing can make something happen. But EG are just playing with supreme confidence, are playing like such a cohesive unit. Individual mistakes don't seem to matter because everyone is always there to bail their teammates out. They are, they are truly playing like a possessed team. Nothing stopping them well, thus they're far. they're straight up starting the Baron 21 minutes in. Okay, Evil Genius is daring the Thieves to cross this ocean of fog, all of this darkness they're to TP, come and try to stop them. Evil Geniuses is ready for this. Dead. It's already 4,000 HP. Make it 2,000. <laughs> 100 Thieves is nowhere nearby. And Baron is claimed. Right, but 100 Thieves, the they've got the teleport coming in. They might still look for something here. Someday's going to see Inspired, who immediately goes for the dunk. Abadaga trying to find something, but he only finds his grave. 
EG in a 5v4. Sunday tries to go in, but now he's stuck in a golden statue. He flashes out to stay alive, it's but who he can't do the same. FBI trying to skirt around this fight, trying to find anything, but he only finds a dredge line. Vulcan has him solved. Vulcan hits the dredge line that matters right onto this area. They finish it off. That's Baron, and that is going to be evil geniuses marching all over Summoner's Rift. Remember the timer that Isaac said. 29-18. If EG wins this in the next seven minutes, fastest finals ever in the LCS. TPing in, they want to get this bounty. Danny has his ulti. Danny uses ult, continues backing away, flash out. Closer can't go any further. Danny gets out of it. Ah, uh, insult to injury. You think you maybe get a cleanup kill, maybe get a glimmer of hope, but the hits just keep on coming for 100 Thieves. EG, nearly 10,000 ahead now. They just make the call. They TP in. They rush down the Baron. Closer. First time you've ever seen the Vulcan, you know, the Nautilus <laughs> hitbox work against the Nautilus. Yeah, a <laughs> little unlucky. But EG on the retreat, you see how Vulcan spread from the team? As soon as he hooks in, Abadaga takes it, flashes forward, three-man fear was great. But look at the focus fire from JoJo and Danny. Yeah, there's just no follow-up behind the Vex engage there. Yeah. During the fear, how much damage was done? None. Almost none. And so as soon as they're out of the fear, immediate explosion of Vex. Vex is off the table, and once you see this retreat, you know all is lost. But 100 Thieves, they didn't give up. They kept trying to salvage something from it. Evil geniuses, though, coming He's to going. take everything. Abadaga looks for impact, but he cannot get enough damage. Impact back up to half HP now with that transformation. EG pushing towards the enemy base, pushing towards the second tier three turret for them to destroy in this game. Remember, mid lane inhibitor already open. We are on the precipice of a new era in the LCS. The new talent, the North American talent built up on evil geniuses. There's one thing left for them to do, and it's destroy this Nexus. Vulcan goes for the dredge line, but he won't get it. JoJo in stasis, and the fight is already over. 100 Thieves are getting ran into the ground, and EG with a perfect ace. Danny almost gets another Penta. He picks up a Quadra, and he will begin their new reign. It is the fastest finals ever, and it never felt this good to be bad. Evil geniuses are your new LCS champions. Live evil indeed. Best teams in the LCS, 3-0 Cloud9. 3-0 Team Liquid, 3-0 Thieves. The evil geniuses have changed the game. The evil geniuses' reign of terror has begun. A new era for the LCS. A new flag posted in the LCS arena. And a new champion will take their bow. 100 Thieves became the fifth team to ever win it last year. Geniuses just became the sixth in incredible fashion. Hoist that trophy, boys! You deserve that! In a year where so many teams looked abroad to try to hoist the trophy, where so many teams looked elsewhere for talent, EG looked within, putting their trust in young North American carries, JoJo and Danny have proven EG's strategy correct. This brand new orb to the LCS coming out of franchising. The future is so bright with the JoJo and Danny core right there. These young guys, these carry threats. And you said earlier, the reign of terror is beginning. Terror is the right word, because these guys are ferocious. And with their victory, it's time for us to toss things down to La Tigress for the Verizon post-game interview. Thank 
you, Captain Flowers. What a moment for evil geniuses and all that have supported them along this entire journey. I hope you have enjoyed your moment with the trophy thus far. Impact, I'm gonna grab you this way. We will get to hear from all of you individually, so don't you worry. Come on down to the front of stage. You always seem so surprised that I pull you for the interview, but it's great every single time. I know you've had a lot of words coming into this final. First title for you since your time with Team Liquid. What does it mean to you how everything went down today? Uh, I mean, thanks guys. <laughs> hey, we just showed that we are better, you know? Like, we, I already knew that we're gonna win because our teammates are so good, like Danny, Jojo, you know, Elaine Talent. <laughs> also, uh, I don't know, I cannot think of anything now because I cannot believe actually we won that. So anyway, thanks guys, I don't know. It wasn't just a win. It wasn't just a 3-0. This was the fastest finals in LCS history. Thoughts on that information for you? Uh, I mean, game was is fast because I don't know, they, I can feel that they're, uh, doesn't know what to, what to do, you know? So it's, because this game not can close that 20 minute game, but they try to do something and bear that, and we can end the pass. I mean, it's good for Earth, so we can go home pass. <laughs> the good side of going home really quickly, right? It seemed like you were feeling yourself, especially game two, bringing out the Mordekaiser. There's a lot of trust within the organization, it feels like. What is that like, working with the squad, allowing you to express yourself on the Rift in such a fashion? Uh, I mean, I just, I just give opinion, uh, my option, and coach trusts that. So what happened there, like, I mean, against Brippo, okay, against Brippo, uh, I blind the Aatrox because I knew he cannot punish, and I knew that I'm better than him in lane, so. And again, someday, I respect him, but you know, I'm better Orun, you know? Did you notice that there is a good portion of the crowd chanting EG throughout this game? A lot of the fans standing behind the team. How did that motivate you and the rest of the squad to be able to perform in such a fashion? Oh. Uh, one stick mic, so uh, I don't know. Uh, I can just, I cannot say anything. I can't believe just. We won. <laughs> Utterly speechless. I do want to ask you about one more thing, though. This isn't just a championship. It means you're going to MSI. Mid-season invitational on the rise. What do you think of that? Uh, it was interesting, our group. We play against G2. Right? And Oceania team. So. so it's order. Oh, 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 sorry. But yeah, I will make pride to you guys. I, I think we, I tr uh, I'm confident and I trust my teammates. We can, we're gonna play better, uh, really well in MSI. Let's go, so baby. just let's see, you know, let's watch ours. Everyone here and everyone watching at home, very much looks forward to watching that play as well. Impact, congratulations on your victory today. We are going to hear from more members of EG, sending things on over to the opposite side of the stage with Dash standing on by with the two carries. Yeah, yeah, it's coming to us right now. Lift those jerseys up. Let's go, Houston. Give it up for your homegrown NA talent. It's JoJo and Danny. Fastest LCS finals in the history of the league. Yesterday, you guys were saying here on this stage it would be 3-0, and then you walked it back. We'll give them one to be humbly respectful. But JoJo, you got it done today. How does it feel to be the next generation of North American champions? I mean, it feels amazing. And you know, we couldn't have done it without our fans supporting us the whole way. So thank you, everybody. I mean, it feels great. Danny, I know that this is something you've wanted for a long time, right? You might be one of the youngest guys out here on the stage, but you've been playing this game for a damn long time. So talk to me. 
about realizing that dream, about earning these chants from the entirety of the North American region. I mean, this is my dream, and it finally happened, so I'm super happy. And yeah, I mean, I'm just super happy. You deserve, you deserve to be as happy as can be. Jojo, where did it all come from? This, this is what I think everybody right now is struggling to understand. Knock to the lower bracket, and then you drop only a single game. And that's in the first of the lower bracket series. It's three O's from there on out. What changed? What was the catalyst within the team that turned you into this just next level? Um, I don't even know, to be honest. Like, I think we just became good somehow. I don't know, we all had the potential. We just became really good. We all wanted it, so there it is. Man, I hope I can say that about my own gameplay one day. I just got good. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm up here sweating. I didn't even play the game. Danny, why are you so calm, cool, and collected, my friend? I guess I'm just a really calm, cool, collected person. I don't really... I don't really get hyped as much as other people would. But don't say I'm not hyped, because I am. I'm just not showing it. I'm just, yeah. It's all, it's all still internalizing. Uh, let's jump into game three, because uh, there was a lot of conversation about the Jinx pick and what it's done for you guys all throughout playoffs. Uh, we've seen, of course, finally an attempt to take you off of it didn't seem to matter. Do you feel like uh, you made a statement here and just at the right moment before you turn your sights to the international stage that they got to be a lot, uh, afraid of a lot more than just Danny's Jinx? I think so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I pulled out the Zaya. My Zeri is obviously pretty ready. And I have a lot more to come, so. JoJo, talk to me about turning towards international, because that's what you guys have earned. Not just that trophy, not just the North American crown, and possibly the start of a new dynasty. You earn the right to represent North America on the international stage at MSI. I know that you've got a lot of confidence in the way you play. That's another echelon. Where's your mind at? What are you thinking? I mean, I saw that MSI bracket, we're against EU, so, I mean, I think we're gonna shit on EU, but we'll have to see it. <laughs> oh, shit, there's more? I mean, I don't know, like, I think we're just way better than them, we'll see. So, it's been over two years, Danny, since we've been able to be in an arena this large, with this many screaming fans. It's your first trip to the finals. It's not just all these people who came out to support you. The families are here as well. Again, to take it all home in front of this crowd and knowing that your family's up there in that EG booth, popping off over the Pentakill yesterday, popping off over the victory today. What does it mean to have that familial support in the building as you take the first one? It feels awesome. Uh, I think when I was in LA and my family wasn't with me, I think they missed me a lot dearly. And uh, any chance that they could take to see me they took it, even though this trip might have been <laughs> really expensive for them. Um, I'm still really happy that they came out to see us win. It's been, awesome. it's been awesome. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Final question, and this is kind of to the both of you, so I'll let you tag team it. Uh, you are, uh, in so many people's minds, the next generation of North American talent, and that's what this storyline has been built on for you guys. Uh, what is what is your mission when it comes to being that representative to the millions of young fans out there who, at the age of 17, want to be able to step onto this stage? Do you feel like you've proven something that the LCS has been missing for a few years? I mean, I think we're the next generation, but we also want to go further because, you know, you look at the past generations, they've never done well internationally, so I think we're planning to do well internationally. I think we'll be the first NA players to actually do something internationally, so yeah. Anything to add there, Danny? I want to take this trip to MSI as a, not only to compete, but also to improve and just get better, because I think we still got a long way to go, but we're not giving up yet. Hell yeah, boys. Well, once again, congratulations on picking up that title. You've got the whole of Houston behind you. You've got the whole of North America behind you as you make your way to that MSI stage. But guess what? We ain't done here. We got two more members to talk to. Back to the other side of the stage. Tigris, take it away. Thank you, Dash. We've got our jungler and inspired. We have our support in Vulcan here to round out the voices of evil geniuses. Speaking of international play, you are coming to us fresh from EU. 
fresh from an MVP run over there. Now you have a title, your first split here in the LCS. What does it mean to you? Such a statement right off the bat. Uh, well, I mean, one year ago I was also in the final and I was in the similar position as today where I was winning 2-0 and I got reverse swept and it felt very bad at the moment. So I'm very happy that today I didn't let it happen and uh, I was helping my teammates as much as I could to just finish the game or like finish the series out 3-0. And it just feels very good that I learned from the experience and yeah, uh, I guess I'm just a better player now. I was good enough to win. Good enough, that's for sure. Vulcan, you are no stranger to championships. First time here on Evil Geniuses, though. First title for Evil Geniuses within the LCS. So what is it like? A whole different type of energy for you this time around. Yeah, I mean, it means a lot to me to win my first split with this new team because um, a lot of the narrative um, with C9 is when a player leaves, they don't ever play at the same you know, level again. And being able to prove that I'm this kind of player that can just go and win championships is just um, very important to me, so. We talk so much about the young carries of Evil Geniuses, JoJo and Danny, but they're able to play the way they can because of how you all are facilitating them. We saw such team unity to make sure Danny could uh, carry in the way that he was able to. So Inspired, tell me a bit about that decision and how you all were surrounding yourselves with the same idea and strategy. I and mean, that's actually pretty funny because when I first time came here to play with the team, uh, I was like, Telling them, Danny, yo, just farm my camps here, get fed, and we'll just win the game. And then he was always like, nah, I don't need it, I don't need it. And now, now when I tell him to just, to just like give him gold, I just take my spoon and like, Danny, that's for you. <laughs> uh, now he doesn't, he doesn't like argue with me. He's like, okay, I'm taking it. And uh, yeah, he's like, he's just kidding. So I'm gonna keep doing that. <laughs> what a way to put it. We've tracked this growth from the team throughout the year. You both have been very vocal in tracking that as well. Vulcan, can you tell me a bit about that? You all sharing this leadership role to make sure you are all in this playoff form that's so different than what we saw in the regular season. Yeah, I don't know what happened because we sucked. And now <laughs> this felt very easy, honestly, like this whole thing. We lost one game to FlyQuest in the lose, loser's bracket, so I don't know, were they the second best team in the region or something? I don't know. No idea. Now, coming into this, Danny was saying on the stage yesterday that they believed Team Liquid were going to be the harder com opponent compared to 100 Thieves. Were you aligned with that going into this finals? Yeah, definitely. I think Closer was just way too cocky because he won last split, but he just forgot that I was not playing <laughs> since I came. Since I came here, he was still acting very cocky. I had to put him down to his place, and yeah. Uh, I, and I think TL was like way harder opponent than 100 Thieves. You definitely made quick work with it, how swiftly that series ended up going. Vulcan, you get to go to MSI, making a return. What a way to go with Evil Geniuses. Thoughts on going to Korea, full-fledged fans that will be awaiting you as well. We'll see, usually you go to Korea and you get humbled a little bit by teams like T1. So we'll see how we're able to deal with that, but I feel like we're the kind of team where we obviously have a lot of young players, so we can take a lot of experience and we'll see how we're able to perform because I feel like our macro is so good and if we're able to like um, clean up our early game, because especially balling, we were inting a little bit. Um, so, so we'll see, I mean, I think we can definitely be very good and I'm looking forward to going there and, and competing again, it'll be fun. And it sounded like JoJo had a very particular opinion on how the group is going to go at MSI, the EU versus NA face-off. You have experience in both regions. Thoughts on facing off against G2 Esports and Order as well in your group? I mean, watching LEC was pretty fun because when G2 also lost their first best of five and then did this miracle run, the 12 and 0, I just said to my team that we are going to do the same. But then we lost the game to Fly because I was like, oh shit, guys, maybe we can't do it. But <laughs> I guess we went for the 11 and 1. It's good as well. And also, I think people just forgot about me a bit in EU and they're like talking about the new best jungler there. But I will prove them that I'm still here and uh, I'm the best jungler that came from EU.
to make a statement and stand strong within your role. For everyone here that has been cheering you on, for everyone that has been supporting Evil Geniuses, I want to hear from you both. What would you like to say for the fans out there and maybe even friends and family as well that have been here for the journey? Yeah, thank you guys a lot for showing up. This has been very insane. And... <laughs> And um, I didn't know if I would ever be able to win a trophy in front of a crowd since my last two trophies I won during COVID. And it's very nice to win in front of you guys. And your energy was amazing the whole weekend. So thanks for showing up. And my parents are also in the suite up there. So I'm very grateful for them to be able to show up and, and for us to not drop a game like this. This was amazing. Thank you. And what about you? I just, I just love playing when I hear the crowd screaming. Like it's so hard to communicate because we just perma hear the crowd, and it just gives me so much energy to play. Because when you play in the studio without the crowd, it seems a bit boring. Like you don't really feel the emotions. You don't know if people are like watching you. But once you are here and you feel the energy, like the the mics cutting out, cutting out, and you feel this, like you feel the stage moving. It just feels amazing. Thank you to you both. The energy is actually so amazing here on the stage due to the play and what you laid out on the table. Everyone, as we head over to the State Farm Analyst Desk, give it up one more time for your MSI LCS representatives. Wow. Wow, awesome. wow, wow. That's I am so gonna hype. steal a word from <sighs> Jack in trying to summarize what Evil Geniuses has done in this postseason, and that is create magic. Yep. They have created magic here in North America. They have changed the narrative in so many ways. That's the Emily, best of the day. They do it in decisive 3 0 fashion yep. and is the fastest and most dominant series we've ever had. I don't want to hear another fucking excuse from teams. Everyone said I got one. She gets one. From NA teams that say that they cannot bring up their academy mid laners. There it is. Dash. I, I, like, I, I'm so frustrated whenever teams like don't actually bother to scout the talent they mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing that I really want to give EG absolute credit for, it's putting the faith and their trust behind these players that they brought up Absolutely. through their own system. Yeah. And, and Emily, I, I echo that so much. I think this win is more important than just an EG championship. Absolutely. I think it has that potential because it takes something as magical as this and as definitive as this. 3-0 against C9. 3-0 against TL. 3-0 against 100 Thieves. Yep. To make change. You need to get over a tipping point of change because I think for so long, teams didn't think that you could build this way. Yeah. They would say, let's go get the two best guys on the market based on their resume yeah. and throw them in. But that's not what EG did, and they definitively crushed everybody else. So I think teams are going to take notice. I think we're going to see a huge reaction, and we're going to see a much different LCS two years down the line. EG has proved otherwise in that sense, and they're not done. Again, I go on stage, I talk to JoJo and Danny, and they're not thinking about really what they accomplished here. They said, sure, yeah, maybe what we just did will change the narrative a little bit. But you know what we want to do? We want to go to international and push that story even further. Yep. They already have their mind set on the next step. Already calling out G2. And it's kind of magical because for G2, they Copium. had their insane run. I think it was a 12-game run that they yep. had. EG had an 11-game run, if you look <laughs> at what they've been doing. Just a step below, close. but it's, yeah, it's something close. where they're looking towards internationals. And it's interesting because they're talking about, Vulcan said, how confident they were in their mid-game, and they just need to clean their early game up. And we could be analytical, but we're celebrating the fact that they were able to get so far and not really know what happened for them to be so good. <laughs> Absolutely, and Emily, I just want to, again, hammer home the point you were making as I see Artemis there holding that trophy. Mm -hmm. I've had many a conversation with him off camera over the years, and this has been something he has chased for a very long time. Just one of the pieces of that coaching staff and that support puzzle that you talked about that was so committed mm -hmm. to a specific way of developing a team, yep. that 
is the army of people behind the five players that had to go out there and get it done today. Yeah, also shout out to Turtle, who people may not know as well, but yeah. he is also one of their coaches. I watched <laughs> you in CBLO as a jungler, so shout out. There uh -huh. you go. I think the other thing that I want to say is like, I am going to be a little analytical because we did Please. see improvement today, I think, in like their setups, in their, their Drake <laughs> focus in <laughs> particular, that was really good. And to make that change overnight is actually super impressive. Yeah, and I think outside of those small tweaks and changes, I feel like they've always stood the same course. The ideas that they had from week five onwards of taking fights when they feel confident, knowing that there's like, let's say, their jungle and support are just like three seconds back or something. They still do that. They still take the fights that they want to take, but they tweak things so that they would just simply execute better. So obviously when it starts working, you're like, well, I don't really feel like we changed anything because we were still in the same mentality, but we tweak things every game, every series, and it felt like they got better and better because they didn't make any drastic changes. They just got better at what they were already doing. They got better at what they were already doing, and they also fulfilled the very thing we kind of had been told for so much of the split, right? We hadn't seen it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fair, we we promised, guys. We're stage, good. Yeah. But That's they true. themselves had promised. Other teams had promised that this EG squad is being underestimated time and time again. And to be fair to them, they were underestimated coming into today as well. Every single player uh, that faced them in scrims were like, no, EG, like, they're good. And, and we, we did not see that until the TL series, yeah. I would say. We did not see that form that everyone had talked about until that TL loss in the upper bracket. And then we certainly saw it running the through the bracket lower bracket. Run, yeah. Exactly, and remember, like just kind of zeroing in on Jojo Pian as well, when he made mistakes during the regular season in the starting points I ser uh, I ser uh, you know, versus Team Liquid in the playoffs, those were mistakes when he's playing aggressively, taking a risk, right? You learn real conclusions from doing just that. And so that's what makes you better. Not playing passively, trying to scale consistently, all of these things where you're like, actually just try and rely on our mid game. No, they, t they are an active team and that's what making them better. Now, I, I know it was a quick series, but it was an action packed series yes. at that was as we roll back through the highlights all the way from game one to game number three. Uh, we won't forget that 100 Thieves had looks, had moments, but that's where a lot of that uh, kind of that improvement that Emily's talking about, Jack, comes in in the recovery from EG. Yeah, I think EG, Vulcan said it in the interview, they were running it down a little bit in the early laning phase, <laughs> but then they had these miraculous team fights and really just high execution, but before that, has to come from better setup from the macro. The way they were managing waves, the way they were setting up vision control, the way they consistently had the right flanks on the opponent carries and the right ways out for their own carries. Even something like this. Yeah. Jojo is taking this fight because he has a team near. It is a bet. It's He doesn't know exactly who is in fog, but because he had the confidence of the team right behind him, uh, there was just so many fights where they were able to be more decisive than 100 Thieves and coming on top. 100%. And there was that Dragon team fight. There was the Mordekaiser team fight up top oh, side. Hit six on like yes. one minion Crazy. before they dive in. But for the most part, wanted to put a focus on Impact as a player who's just been an incredible uh, 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 player throughout this series yeah. and was a mm -hmm. difference maker. Yeah, and I think the other thing that I want to point out that kind of piggybacks off of your point, Jet, is that like when we're looking at EG all throughout the year, I think they were always consistently good at trying to get gold on their carries, right? Even if it <laughs> meant making a cross map play and not going for a neutral objective. It's something I call out several times that they would do in particular with Rift Herald early on in the split, but then this series uh, or in this, like in their run from yesterday and today, we saw them do it uh, against Drake. And then in, the, in this final series, we saw them improve their Drake setups and have really a lot cleaner looks around neutral objectives. Exactly, and that's a lot about their vision. I mean, this one, a look, maybe in desperation, but he found it, and he was wanting maybe to try and snowball that look from closer. This was the last effort. Yeah. Once this fight went the way of EG, the series is over. Yes, and so for Evil Geniuses, their vision control around uh, not just objectives, but around, let's say, blue side jungle. If they're trying to bounce between mid and top lane wave when they have an advantage, they're not losing anything. Whoop. They, they just don't show any holes, and it's making it, it made it difficult for Team Liquid, who they said was better, mm -hmm. to try and punch through that. Mm -hmm. It made it incredibly difficult for 100 Thieves. And this fight was actually really important. I think Jojo Pion really did a great job in zoning. Of course, they burst out uh, Abadaga, but of course, the ultimate, the W from Victor, like, there was only one angle for someday to walk through, and he just gets bursted because they know exactly where he's going. The other thing I'll say about this, 
because you can't take anything away from this squad in what they accomplished in this run, right? 100%. Three O's. There's, mm -hmm. We talk about, I hate to bring it back to this and give Jad a little bit of credit for the no, tuck. You gotta thing. do it, you gotta do it. I'm gonna give you a little bit of credit for the tuck thing on the Baron heel because yeah, oh, okay, no. in a moment or two, something broke their way. But yeah. again, you don't put that kind of a win streak together, the 11 and 0 on the lower bracket. Uh, if you don't have it. Every sport has something like this. In basketball, when you hit a couple shots, the hoop just looks bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> You're on fire. EG, you win a couple team fights, it just looks better and better. Every opportunity is more and more promising, and you just keep swishing shot after shot. And that's what EG did this whole weekend. Yeah, what a slide in the gold lead that they never really gave up. And, and to your point, I also think that the team fights just looked better from their side. There was a certain team fight, I think it was in game two, where like they just noticed Abadaga was out of position on his LeBlanc around Dragon. And they're like, oh, we just burst him down and this is an easy team fight. It looks like they just have complete and utter focus on the positioning on the enemy team and they take advantage of it. Full credit towards, in that specific game, once again, Impact, who went wild on his Mordekaiser, mm -hmm. a pick that you haven't seen, but he just feels so confident in the system that they have in Evil Genius to pull it out and kill it. And now we give full confidence Woo! to Danny, who gets player of the series today. Uh, whenever you have a 3-0 dominant series like this, it can be difficult to choose a singular member as a standout. And there definitely were moments for every person on that squad. You look at a scoreline look yeah. like that. You look at the fact that the team has invested in him as that late game insurance policy and time and time again have put their hopes and dreams of victory on his shoulders in the late game chat, and he delivers every single yeah. time. Inspired in the interview saying like, please Danny, take my camps, take this food, <laughs> eat, eat. And he just carries every game. Exactly. And that's, that's what we saw. I think game one was the biggest example of feed Danny. It, yep. I, I mean it, when he must have felt like Uzi yeah. in that game. I have not seen a team since the RNG team with Uzi in 2018 to put this much external resource into yeah. their AD carry. Yeah. In terms of everybody bailing to get him turret plates. Every Rift Herald drops for Danny. Almost every ward goes to Danny. I yeah. saw JoJo sneak one. Oh, come like, on, yeah. JoJo. No. He did. Get yeah. it together before I'm yeah. aside. We were but, tracking it. And, and <laughs> that's that's to me why he's player of the series. Impact played amazingly. I know our vote was actually very, very close. Yeah, yeah. that was a yeah. breaker on that But one. I think it's well deserved for either one of those guys and Danny with all the resources he got, he makes good use of them. It's no longer a knock of like, oh yeah, but they set him up for success. When you 3-0 every team in the LCS. Uh, <laughs> there's a confetti in my teleprompter. <laughs> so, uh, so I can't actually read what's there. I'm gonna read over here instead. But uh, as we continue to celebrate this Evil Geniuses squad, if you're fired up and want more League of Legends, make sure you head on over to twitch.tv slash academy to watch the first round of the NA College Championship. Over 400 schools across 20 conferences have played down to the top 32 at the NA College Championship. Make sure you come see the best of the college season, compete for pride, glory, scholarships, and a trip to Los Angeles for the top eight. And I think that's so much more important to be said right now because of what we talked about at the beginning of this segment, Emily. It is time for the whole of the region to not just get behind Danny and JoJo, but everybody else who's still not of age, who's starting to fight their way towards the LCS and has the dream of doing what these two guys just did here today. We need to invest in that ecosystem. We need to see the teams do the same. And it starts in things like amateur and college. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think, uh, again, like, for me, it's a lot about the scouting. Like, you do, yes, we do have worse solo queue. Like, yes, our, you know, like, you, it is going to take, and I, I've heard this from coaches, like, it is going to take longer to bring up an NA player sometimes, right? Well, EG might have proved you wrong there. Yeah. Jojo, but yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think, like, it's worth doing. The payoff is immense. This entire crowd was behind yeah. Danny all weekend it, it was nuts like i'm actually i feel so happy to be part of this moment yeah. i feel very fortunate it really felt to me like all of the disenfranchised tsm or cloud nine or even like anyone i saw in a tl jersey was cheering for danny and they they weren't cheering for 100 thieves the 100 thieves jersey were still cheering for 100 Absolutely. thieves they were loyal they, they're a great org with a lot of of good branding but the uniqueness of what EG has been able to accomplish, there is not only actual success, yes. there is huge fan success yep. with this strategy, and it will change things. 100%, it's the perfect storm, because Proving Grounds came out just recently. Yep. Uh, you know, Champions Q is coming out where a lot of eyes are now on a lot of young players that really want it, that they are hungry. And for so long, you ask players that have been in Academy and Amateur for so long, 
and especially when they're mid laners and saying, I have no idea how to get to the LCS. Like, they feel like they've been so successful winning or, or feeling that improvement, but knowing there's that ceiling. And it feels like today is that turn into a new page. <laughs> no! I wonder what that word is. Let's freaking go! We need some detectives out there. Anyone out there in the crowd know what that word is? <laughs> Uh, we know what that word is because Emily got one. Okay, there Sorry. we go. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, producers, I so love you. So you just throw that audio clip right in the middle of the tweet there. There it is. Um, the last thing I want to do before we go is, is just kind of take a moment to reflect on the season as a whole. Uh, again, kind of what it means as incrementally over, over the past 12 months, we've kind of returned to that state of normal, right? Like what we yeah. know and love about League of Legends. And it was really special uh, to be in this building. Love to all of you who are still hey, everybody that's uh, chilling and vibing uh, out here in the arena. Uh, for all for all of you, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, joining the broadcast team uh, for yeah. those of us who have been here for a bit, like, what has it been like this 2022 spring season for you? Ooh, uh, so I think we started the spring split off, and I was like, oh man, the strategic diversity and the way that every team approached roster building differently was super mm -hmm. interesting to me. So to see this EG team, like this particular lineup of five players, come out on top is really amazing like i said i just feel fortunate to be here like i didn't think i'd be here like are you kidding me like thank you for having me <laughs> no 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 thank you stop yeah, that thank you for being yeah, stop here that. first of all we are blessed to be in your presence Jat, yeah, you and i have been lucky enough to be around the lcs for a very very long time yeah uh, for you to return to the broadcast to to you know to work through the COVID era and to return to an arena once again how do you feel Refreshed. Refreshed. This was a very refreshing weekend. We got to see so many things that brought me back to the old days. And I hope to see more of it in the future. Raz? I got three words. Three? Energy, love, and passion. Boom. Think, uh, words that I felt when I walked through, met a lot of people, fan fest was going wild, you know, going onto Twitter or any, like, social space and just seeing that people really, you know, loving and supporting the players and having faith in the future. That's something that I think is incredible and will only get better. Well, in the most classically Raz way possible, I'm his ready. three words turned into <laughs> far more than three. Uh, but I tell you this much, my friend, I really could not have said it better myself. Uh, so I will echo everything that Raz says as I bring our first road show in over two years to a close. Thank you so much, Houston, for being an incredible host to the NRG Stadium and all of the fans behind me and at home. It's been an incredible, incredible LCS spring split, but that's gonna do it for our 2022 spring split. So on behalf of myself, the casters, it. and the entire broadcast crew, we're rooting it. for you, Emily, to hit this camera! Oh, oh, they it. Oh, was that? They <laughs> oh my God, I love that they did it! We love you all, we'll see you at MSI in May. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other, you all. Good night. When you sit down and you look out and there's hundreds of people, you know, sitting there in the studio watching you, a lot of these guys haven't experienced that. What's up everyone and welcome to the LCS Spring 2022 Playoffs. We need to give them a good experience, right? Yeah, sure. Time up here against oh, Impact. He's gonna get Impact him. gets first blooded. Okay, oh no, where are you gonna go? Oh no, Ari, don't walk oh into that. Oh my God. Whippo's gonna stand and fight against Hello. Jojo, but Jojo's ready for all. Most fun game I've ever played in my life, I think. <laughs> Vulcan at 300 HP. Santorin's at 200, but he's ready for the reset. Bjergsen has ulti, he's gonna go for it. Oh, Bjergsen picks up another one. TL do clinch it, but EG push them to the brink. C9 versus 100 Thieves before week seven. If people told you this was the matchup, you're like C9 3L. Here, Abadaga goes over the wall, he's got the sweep! One to two, they're gonna get the look for number three. Five. So, look, one of the in the way, flash two! Oh, he did it! What a madman! 100 Thieves come into playoffs as the hottest team in the LCS. We just think Summy is their win condition. He's kind of playing 1v5 versus us, so we were teaching him a lot. What is C9 going to do after the loss to 100 Thieves? Because we think that exposed a lot of issues. 
Oh, it's the Renekton. Look at Fudge's face. He knows what he's doing. Not go just oh. yet. Does he want to? Oh. A final slap a triple kill from Fudge. Cloud nine. Rose school the Guardians. But we also haven't seen a ton out of FlyQuest recently. How will they come prepared to the stage? Can they keep fighting? It's fire! Good luck for you going up to Nexus! Hold the arm, it's a body block! And the Nexus will survive! And Takui is the last man standing. The Oriana tries the point blank staff down! And EG takes all five! Men! Men! If anything, this playoffs has definitely made us question, really, who is the best? A quadra kill for Hansama. And TL push 100 Thieves to match point. Yeah. Yeah, I don't lie, okay? Yeah, the yeah, most yeah, is, is going to be the best feeling in your life. Ignite still burning him. The Flash W! Fort solo kill. Closures in. 100 Thieves come alive. They break their ankles. A reverse sweep for 100 like stop the team that fought they are the best in the league. We have one more save. Let's be humble. Like this is incredibly exciting. NA just doesn't usually have players this young that are this good. If you want North America to be better, you should be behind Jojo Kyun and his improvement. It's been far too long. Hello, Ghostman! We'll have the first seeded team Liquid in the losers bracket final against the surging evil geniuses. Team Liquid already off to a lane kingdom. Being a champion matters more than having a highlight play or a pet kill. I think I just wanna win. You're kidding me! Here comes kill number two! And he's the king of Pentagon! Why? Why is that? Let's go! And evil geniuses will just slaughter everyone! A 3-0 victory! We cannot overlook 100 Thieves. They have been incredible. I really think we are gonna 3-0 them. Because I think they're not that good. Jojo in stasis, 